The year is 1603 in Kaito, Japan, near the Kamo River. A theater is erected in a clearing. A performance using bright makeup and exaggerated movements is performed by a woman named Izimo no Okuni. Over time, this type of theater became known as Kabuki, or Sing and Dance Bizarre Theater. And over time, this type of theater became what is known today as a stereotype of Japanese culture and tradition. But how did it become to be this way? And how did such a bizarre form of theater become so popular? These questions and more will be answered on this week's episode of History Theater, Kabuki. In the early 1600s, Japan was under siege, not against another country, but against itself. Japan at this time was in a time known as a period of warring states, where land barons fought against one another for power over Japan. At this time, a clan known as the Tokugawa Shogunate were in power and would be the last feudal Japanese military governments to rule for another 260 years. Izumo no Okuni came from a family who helped to maintain the Izumo Grand Shrine, and her father was the blacksmith for the shrine. During times of war, she, a priestess, would need to go out and gain donations that would sustain the temple in hard times. She was sent to visit the Camel River, and there she would transform sacred dances and songs into a theater known later as Kabuki. The people who gathered around the river were known as the Kabuki, as they were odd people, often those who were homeless, young and rebellious, or old and thrown away, or simply hipsters who defied tradition or social dictation. She named the theater after the people of the river, and her performances were no different from the word or the people. Her performances were very gaudy and had much noise and utilized bright colors in both makeup and, and clothing. She was the only actress, so she had to play all parts, both male and female. Originally, the theater was simply line dances with no significant plot and only performed by women. But a man named Sanzaburo Ujisato became her patron and began to write plays and skits for her, turning the boring dances and singing into intriguing acts with actual plots. It also helped that Okuni was also the lover of her playwright, which gave him a burning passion to support her theater style. Throughout her life, she competed against other women who tried to make a quick dime on her innovation, though she remained the all-time star until her retirement in 1610, to where all recordings of her life ceased and became legend. In the year 1629, Kabuki was banned by shogunal authorities because of its suggestive skits and actresses who often slept around at tea houses nearby their theaters. Authorities assumed banning the plays would clean up morality in men, but grosser forms of prostitution were invented as a result. Later on, boys began to take up the popular and well-loved theater, but in 1652, a ban on boys performing the theater was put into place. Because of this ban, grown men began to take up the Kabuki theater and developed a theater known as Yara Kabuki, or Grown Men Theater. Men would often omit the suggestive themes while still keeping the dancing lively and interesting, creating a Kabuki theater most like modern day. 
In 1673, kumadori makeup began to be used in kabuki theater, creating kabuki's unique and iconic faces of white bases with red or blue, sometimes called crimson or indigo, coloring. Today, kabuki is known for this type of makeup and is not only performed by theater groups in Japan, but all over Asia and some parts of Europe and America. Today, kabuki is a traditional icon for Japanese culture and is often used as a reference to Japanese culture in modern day movies and animes, such as Big Hero 6, Cars 2, Chucky the Movie, Okami the Video Game, and popular animes such as Dead Man Wonderland, Bleach, and more. Thank you for watching History Theater Kabuki. This is your host, Janelle Martinez, signing out. Watashi no Yuji Sayonara, or goodbye, my friends.